Hello and welcome, I am Scarperlock, and this is City of Heroes on the Rebirth server. We are with Quintessence Lass, our level 37 brute, who has four and three quarter million experience and about a million to go to get to level 38 in our final secondary power. Run a story arc for um, Steve Sheridan, and I just auto completed a mission. We c he asked us to come over to Marvin Weintraub to ask if Marvin knew where the missing doctor was, Dr. Snyder, and he said, oh, go and defeat 35 Richty with this psychic probe, and one of them will be weak-minded enough to tell you, so we know we're going to Brickstown. Um, before we get there, let me show you what I've done with my enhancements. I just recorded this whole thing and then screwed it up and hit stop instead of pause. So let's just start again. So we now have three sets. I've gotten the Shadow Punch set, uh, thanks to Tiger Strike, and then I used this character to buy the... I had two of the um, the level 36 and 30 Crushing Impact in, uh, recipes, so I went ahead and bought the rest of them from the Merit Reward Vendor, and we now have um, Crushing Impact on our Smite Power, so we got lots of buffs to our character, including extra resistance to both mez and attacks. We have some extra health, we have some extra recharge, some extra accuracy from all of these sets. Uh, looking at the other sets, I want to put um, Touch of the Nictus on this one. That's going to, that is an accurate to hit, uh, sort of an accurate heal, which means it gives us heal, but also accuracy, which is what we want, so that we can hit. And then on Midnight Grasp, once we have enough slots, I want to put Touch of Death, which will give increased negative damage and give us a lot of buffs. And those are probably going to be the main sets on our offensive powers. I don't know if I'm going to put a set on Soul Drain, um, because Soul Drain I want triple recharge on. And um, Soul Drain, you can put a two-hit buff set in it, but that doesn't improve our accuracy. It doesn't have any accuracy to the Enhancer. And I don't, I don't want to miss with that power. So we'll see. I may put a set on it, but it's not a high priority at this point. So off to Brickstown we go, and um, we're going to be trying to rescue Dr. Snyder again. This time, hopefully, we won't find a bunch of dead, a bunch of like old clothes with his pocket pager. Hopefully, we will actually find him. This is the organ grinder story arc. So we know that the Richty are trying to steal like human body parts and blood and stuff like this, but we haven't yet figured out why with this character. Of course, our other characters already know. <laughs> But I won't say any more in case you haven't watched the other playthroughs, so we won't have too many spoilers. This character's kicking butt and taking names, and she's going to be even more awesome now. If you look at our defenses, we're looking at upper 20s, around 30% both defense and resistance to nearly everything. When you figure out how much that is, about a third of the time they miss, right? Maybe more than that, because they have 50% base, right? So they're down to like a 20% chance to hit. And then when they do damage, they're doing 30%. They're doing like 70% of the damage. Um, and so if you do the math on that, if you figure a, on, a, on, a, on a standard minion, right, with a base 52 hit, minus about 30 on average, some a little more, some a little less, that means that in 10 blows, they're only going to hit me twice, Oh, look at all these guardians. That's going to be bad. In 10 blows, they're only going to hit me twice. And when they hit me, they're only going to do about 70% damage. So if, imagine 10 blows of 100 damage each. That's 1,000 damage coming at you, right? And after that, only 200 damage hits you. And then of the 200 damage, you only took about 150-ish, right? So that means you're almost like the equivalent of 85% resistant. It's pretty awesome. Let's get this other guardian. And as you can see, we can dive into a group of, what was that, six oranges. And our health is at max by the time the fight is over. And our endurance is pretty far close to max as well. Now these guys are going to be a pain. Because the drones are always a pain. So let's take out the conscript first. Of course I missed the conscript and hit the drone. You've got to know it and love it. 
Get that to hit buff going. So at this point, Soul Drain's doing about a recharge every minute, which means we can we can minimally use it every pretty much every other battle and close to every battle, depending on timing, you know. So that's pretty good. It lasts about 30 seconds, it looks like. See, it, it is 30, right? Yeah, it lasts 30 seconds, and you can recharge it every minute. So that means you're having it up half the time, which is pretty awesome. Alright, well, I'm going to ignore him and move forward. Oh, there he is. Okay, we'll attack. Stay in place. Missed him anyway. All right, well. Okay, just ignore him. We don't really need to defeat all in here, so... I'm not that concerned with these guys. The main... The main issue is uh, watching out for the Guardians. Because if they buff... Especially if they stack their shields, it's just horrible. In terms of just constant missing. We don't need all these greens. I mean, we pretty much almost don't need any greens at all now. Our self-heal, if you watch the timer here with our buffs, every 53 seconds we can reheal. And that, and then, of course, we have Siphon Life, which can also potentially heal us if it hits. Very nice. Yeah, this character is just cruising. And if it weren't for the fact that we would never be able to hit plus fours and I'd be constantly whiffing and getting grinding my teeth, um, I'd move us up to plus three already. That's how awesome she is. I was trying to hit the monkey there. So I don't know where Snyder is. These guys are just infantry, so we'll just come in and beat them up. And so this definitely reminds me of when I was a, playing a martial arts scrapper for the first time and told my my fellow supergroup mates that I love punching Richty. I love fighting Richty. And they were like, are you insane? because of all the mezzing that Richty do, but because you have a mez defense like this when you're a scrapper or a brute, the Richty don't have any ability to mez you. Really, the only annoying thing is the advanced drones when the Guardians stack shields on them. And it's just horrible, because you're completely floored. But except for the missing, right? They're not hard. For a character like this. But apparently they were very hard for all of my friends who were playing like defenders and um, controllers and especially blasters, who were the majority of my supergroup. This was back in the launch days of City of Blasters. So now I waited to do Soul Drain till both guys were in my AoE so that I could Soul Drain them both. We're at 200% damage now. We're doing massive damage. I don't know where Snyder is. Did we miss something here? Look at that. One attack brought him so far down that two blows was all it took to take out an orange minion. That is awesome.
This character is just kicking butt. Okay, I missed something. Maybe over this way. Yes, so there's an exit here, it looks like. Nope. What am I missing? There's nothing over here either. Where is this guy? Ah. Alright. This character is doing really well with endurance so far. Um, we really don't even have to um, do much about trying to use our energy recovery abilities. And to that, uh, that I think is because now that we have the sets, the sets all provide more endurance reduction than I could afford to give while trying to buff both accuracy and defense and buff recharge on my powers. Most of the time I sacrifice the endurance. Right? But now with all of these sets, right, um, the, these sets provide 35% endurance reduction. Over here we've got 60% endurance reduction. And over here we've got another 35. And so that's really helping. There's Snyder. All right, so I think we're going to probably have to lead him out. So let's take out these guys since they're potentially in the way. Now at least Soul Drain recharges enough that I can say, okay, I'm with drones. Let's go ahead and use it. I don't need to save it. because I can just re-up it again fairly soon. Let's get hit these guys. So it's daylight saving time today, which means... Um, Probably going to need to have lunch, even though it feels like it's not time yet. When I was a kid, I always loved daylight saving time. I do like it being light out later in the summer, but I really um, have come not to like it so much these days because it tends to wreak havoc with my biological clock, and sometimes I end up getting migraines. And I just had the second of two migraines in as many weeks, so I'd really like not to get another one. And we don't have to lead him out, so we've found him. I got a clue. He says, they forced me to do transplants on some of their most powerful soldiers when I extracted their organs. They were in terrible shape, withering and decaying. So their organs are decaying, and they're trying to get human organs to fix themselves. Let's see what Sheridan says. He says, Dr. Snyder, thank thanks you for saving my life. For saving his life, I must say... His story is pretty strange. Performing organ transplants on Rigti soldiers. What is that about? Then he says, I've done a little digging, and there's a rumor that Rigti bodies are taken to a secret serif lab for analysis. Makes sense, I guess. I have a good friend at serif, Rebecca Brinnell. Go see her. Maybe she can tell you more about the organ thefts. So now we're going to go to Atlas Park. Talk to Rebecca. Sets are cool, and it's fun to see your character getting more powerful, but to some degree it's a self-defeating exercise when you're soloing like this and not intending to do something like go into Incarnate Trials, because the better I make the character, the harder I have to set the difficulty up. Rather than going up to a higher difficulty, we could, you know, as a brute, sort of like a tanker, maybe we could go to times two enemies. The, the main problem with that is it makes a lot of the missions take a lot longer. On the other hand, having groups of enemies will make our AoE powers work even better. So you could potentially do that. I'm going to think about that in between episodes. What I actually may do is I'm going to leave it the way it is now, but um, 
after we finish this story arc, in between story arcs when I'm working on getting the next one, maybe I'll try a couple at plus two times two and we'll see how it goes. I think we did that with Silver Phoenix probably around this level, maybe a little later. Um, this character at this point feels at least as powerful as Silver Phoenix, maybe to some degree slightly more. I feel like I don't put quite the damage out that she did, but I'm a much tougher because of the resistance. And the ability to self-heal, the ability to, um, uh, to self- uh, recover endurance is super useful. She says, Steve Sheridan called and said you would be by. Seraph does indeed have a lab where the rigged are examined, but it's not like we end up with every single one. I pulled a couple of strings and security of visitors pass. Go talk to them. And now what's going to happen is we're going to find a bunch of Rigdy in the lab who have attacked it. Shocking. So as we go, I guess i um, kind of doing a little campaign diaries of my DD campaign last night we played. It was a lot of fun. Um, I have to say, it always takes them longer to decide to do things than I expect. Um, they spent a long time. So, so when we left them off, they knew that the Temple of Diana, where they suspected, but didn't know for sure because they'd never been inside it, suspected had the secret statue that's the of the statues they're looking for. They That had had its devotive offering stolen they knew the votive offerings had been stolen. They found some giant fish scales, fish giant scales of fish, um, and they smelled bad and everything, and they knew something was going on with the fish, but they weren't sure what, and they wanted to figure out how to get inside the temple to see what's under the statue, because that's kind of what the campaign is all about, is uncovering those things. And they finally figured that out. And so... Um, so they were talking about what to do, and the way I'd figured they would set it up is go to the temple, ask the pontifica, the, the head priestess, if they could go inside briefly to examine the statue, and she would say to them, well, look, you know, you're not supposed to even know that statue exists, and I'm not supposed to talk about it, but I so desperately want these items back that if you go and bring them back for me, I will, I will let you into the temple, and I'll maybe turn my back and pretend I don't see you when you fool around with that statue. Um, but they didn't actually ask her to do that. And so I wasn't sure what they were going to do. And one of the things they decided to do was turn one of the familiars that they have, two of the characters have familiars, into um, a little spider. And like the one familiar was an owl and it dropped the spider onto the ceiling, the roof of the uh, temple. And then the spider climbed in between the cracks of the door and you know, climbed down the wall and went to look at the statue. So then what they started talking about was the temple's under guard. What they started talking about was finding a way to get in without the guard um, seeing or hearing them get in, which would be, I don't know, they were talking about the one guy has polymorph and I think he can twin the spell because he's a sorcerer. So he's saying I could basically polymorph me and somebody else to go into the temple and then we turn off the polymorph and we can look at the statue and do what we have to do and uh, and then you know po I guess polymorph again and come back out I'm not sure if he can do that at this level maybe I'm not really sure and so I was thinking okay if they go in get what they need and leave the temple and just sort of think, oh, well, it's a shame that the vote of offerings were taken, but we're not going to do anything about it. There goes weeks of work. They're thinking, how am I going to get these guys to actually accept the quest from this high priestess that I want them to accept, you know? And so, um, so they, their main struggle, I, th I think it may have been that they could polymorph on their way in, but then if they, if they turned into humans, they wouldn't be able to polymorph on their way out. It was pretty clear that they were going to have to be a human or humanoid to open the statue um, because you have there's like a little thumbprint that you have to press your thumb on, and the spider tried, you know, hopping up and down on it, but it didn't do anything. And um, so 
they figured, okay, we're going to need to, you know, get in. I did remind them that the statue makes a noise when it rolls back. And so they figured, okay, the guards might hear that. So we got to find a way to do it without getting into trouble with the guards. And so they said, okay, well, let's like look around. A couple of them wanted to go shopping. They wanted to ask some questions. So they split up and they did that. And the gnome character who is a devotee of Diana and had spoken to the priest, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to wait outside the temple and see if she comes out because they had seen the familiar saw her inside praying. So I had her come out and um, talk to the gnome. And the gnome was like, look, I could try to investigate what happened. Can you let me into the... T I know I normally shouldn't go in the temple. Can you let me into the temple to investigate? She said, no, I can't let anybody in the temple after what's happened. But she said, if you really want to get into the temple... It's not normally done, but if you bring the votive offerings back, I might be willing to look the other way and let you come into the temple on a one-time basis. So that kind of triggered the gnome character, who is the new player, to go, okay, maybe we don't need to, like, break a bunch of rules and risk getting arrested to go into this temple. Maybe we can just get allowed in if we get the votive offerings back, which she's inclined to do anyway since it is her patron whose offerings were taken. So um, they finally, they actually agreed to, let's do this. And then she started searching around. And there were clues that I had left for them to find behind the temple. Um, there, were, there were more of these fish scales. And, um, and this uh, fishy oil. And there were some footprints. And they were, she was able to follow the footprints. Because they were oily, there was some residue left on the road that hadn't been washed away by people walking and it hadn't rained recently. She was able to track them to the road and she noticed there were some squirrels and birds there. So she used speak with animals to talk to the squirrels. And they told her that they, you know, in their squirrel way, because they don't understand what's going on, that they saw some men carrying large, what they called large nuts. Men that looked like fish carrying large nuts into the ocean. That they came out of the sea and they went back into the sea in this one spot where she was standing and she didn't actually ask them where they went um but she otherwise got most of the information i figured they'd get upon investigating and so um so this made her say well we should we should you know definitely investigate these fish and then the the sorcerer had been playing music with the elves because my elves are very like musical kind of like the elves in the Hobbit, where they kind of know what what's going on and they sing about it as as they go, and so they, you know, I I kind of characterize it to them like it's sort of like being in a musical, and um, and they they seem to enjoy that the players, and um, so he was playing music with the elves, and I I told him you know make an insight check to see if you notice this, and he didn't, but the cleric did, uh, and while they were singing, they were they were peppering their songs occasionally with these comments about strange lights being seen under the water and so the cleric started investigating that and he found out that in the like on the peninsula north of town there are these lights underwater that several sailors have seen and it's a little weird but yeah weird stuff happens in the ocean all the time and so they said let's go investigate it so they got in their their catamaran and they went to investigate that area and they found a sea cave um, and it, they found the, I, if, if you noticed I, uh, in a previous episode, I mentioned that to get away from the Astral Dragon, they had offered it treasure and they gave it the Cleric's plus one armor and the Sorcerer's Wand of, I don't know, Wand of the War Mage or whatever it is that allows him to do like plus one to his spell attack bonuses or something. And so because they had given those up, I said, I'm going to put into the Sea Cave right at the entrance actually a nicer set of armor and a nicer magical item how did these guys not notice me oh I do have stealth I guess although that shouldn't be engaged while I'm in combat and I was just in combat so anyway I put those things in the entrance sort of to the cave there were these four giant crabs they fought the giant crabs and they found a ring of sorcery they haven't identified it yet and they found the Quiros, the leather Quiros of the Laurel Wreath, which is Apollo's. And that's going to give plus one armor and some additional channel divinity options to the cleric, because he's a cleric of Apollo. So um, 
they found them, but they haven't. They just stuck them in the bag of holding. They haven't identified them yet. It's another one that surprised me because I would have figured they'd just take the ten minutes to ID these things. Um, because it could be useful, and there's a there's you know potential battles coming up, but we'll see what happens. So they they wound their way through the cave. Um, there was a little side diversion. I thought they were going to go down where there's a plesiosaurus, but they saw the signs that um, a that some of the giant crabs had been eaten by something with big teeth, and they said let's not go down that way, which was pretty smart. And they then wound their way through the uh, the cave toward almost the end and found a giant crocodile. Now there are actually two of them. One of them is under the water. In a sp so there's like two ways to go up and they went the other way and the one that's hiding in the water I randomly rolled ahead of time what its stealth was and it got a natural 20 so it's hiding with a stealth of 25 and they did not beat 25 when they did their perception rolls so I think they're going to probably fight the crocodile that they see and when the battle happens the other one's going to come out of the water behind them and surprise them it's going to be interesting to see what happens and then they go into the deep caves where they could potentially meet the deep gnomes and some ropers. So we'll see what happens. And then past the deep caves is the shrine of the Kuatoa. So it'll be interesting to see how they approach this thing, because there are hundreds of these. They're individually each quite a bit weaker than the PCs, but if you're going to fight two or three hundred of them, yeah, they're probably going to win. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. They're a little bit beaten up, but not too badly. Are they going to take a short rest to get their hit points back? Are they going to take a long rest to get their spells back? I don't really know. If they start taking rests in these caves, there's a very high probability that a wandering group of Kuwatoa is going to come by and attack them. So we'll see what happens. <clears throat> but it's been a lot of fun, and I enjoyed it a lot. All right, so Steve Sheridan says, Sorry you didn't get any solid in info on the Rikti biology. We'll just have to keep digging. All right, guys, so that's, I think, where we're going to stop. How long have we been going? 27. I mean, it's close enough to 30. I think we'll stop there. I hope you've enjoyed. Until next time, I am Scarperlock, and this has been City of Heroes on the Rebirth server.